Yesterday we learned a little bit about friction, specifically the two different types of friction. Brogan, do you remember what the two types of friction were? Static yeah, static and kinetic. Uh, who remembers a different name for kinetic friction? In the end, if you call it kinetic friction, that's fine. But there are a couple other names that we can apply to it. Dynamic, dynamic friction, kinetic moving, dynamic moving. Another name that I sometimes give to it, it's not a real name for it, but I sometimes call it sliding friction because sliding is reminding you that, it's, that something is, is actually moving versus something that's rolling like a, like a wheel. It's actually not kinetic friction. It's actually, if you think about this, static friction. The wheel isn't sliding along the surface. The wheel is turning, so at every point on the wheel, it's actually not moving relative to the road. And that helps us, if we use the term sliding friction, it helps us to distinguish something that's rolling versus something that's sliding. Static friction versus kinetic friction. So static friction, the other kind of friction, the friction that resists motion when an object is at rest. In other words, it tries to keep an object from beginning to move. Uh, there was a term that I called static friction. I often refer to static friction as the static friction was the Stubborn friction. That's not a real name by any means for static friction, but I sometimes call it that to remind us that it's that force of friction that is, that is stubborn. It's that pain in the butt friction that does whatever I do in response to me doing it versus kinetic friction. It's that stay at home, like I'll just be what I am kind of friction. If it's 40 newtons, it's going to be 40 newtons no matter what. Static friction. The force of friction that resists motion when an object is at rest. Um, the pain in the butt friction, force of friction, the, uh, the, the uh, stubborn force of friction, okay? the force of friction that does whatever I do until it reaches a maximum value. When we calculate static friction, that's what we always calculate is that maximum value. And we use the equation mu is equal, uh, sorry, f is equal to mu times the normal force. Fn, the normal force, which we always say in physics 20, at least until now, and for all of today, in fact, Fn will be equal to gravity, m times g. Mu, careful there, that's not an m. It's not a u. Okay, it's mu. It's a Greek letter that looks like kind of a handwritten u, mu, handwritten u or a handwritten m. Mu is the coefficient of static friction, and that's a measurement of how much two things stick together when they slide on each other or when they move on each other or try to move on each other. Give an example of two materials that have a low coefficient of static friction, two things that don't stick together very well. No. Tires and ice don't stick together very well at all, although winter tires have a higher coefficient of friction than all season tires or summer tires do, right? Uh, give me some, an example of something that has a relatively high coefficient of friction. And we're always talking about two materials. Okay? Rubber on ice is going to be different than rubber on concrete, right? Okay, what has a higher coefficient of friction than rubber on ice? Besides rubber on concrete, don't use that one. Yeah, copper on copper is, is really, really high. That's not always the most practical thing, right? We don't make brakes in cars out of copper and copper, although the friction would be really nice, right? The brakes would work really, really well for a short time. Why wouldn't they work really well after that? Like, why wouldn't your brakes last? My brakes last me like 80,000 kilometers. Why would copper on copper brakes not last 80,000 kilometers? Yeah, it would wear them down. It would wear them down, but it, I mean, brakes wear down. All brakes do. Yeah, copper is pretty malleable, right? You guys know what that term means? Malleable, bendable, change shapeable. Um, and as it gets hot, it's going to be more, even more malleable, and it's going to bend a lot, right? So driving through the mountains, you put your foot on the brake, going down a couple hills, and all of a sudden your brakes are going to change shape, and they're not going to be any good anymore. So you'd have to change them. You know, you go to Vancouver. You have to change them three times on the way to Vancouver. Uh, so that wouldn't be very practical. A lot of friction, but not very practical. Okay, kinetic friction, that force of friction that acts once an object is already moving, 
looks almost the same. But know that when we solve for this, uh, we're not solving for the maximum possible value. We're solving for the actual value. Static friction is, static friction, we never saw for mathematically. It's just whatever force I'm pushing with, unless I push with a force bigger than the maximum value. Kinetic friction, we solve for that using mu times Fn, and it's going to be that value. No matter how hard I push, it's going to be that value. As long as it's moving, it's mu times the normal force. All right. Yesterday we had a question that we're working on on page 187. I want to take a quick look at that question. And then we had a couple questions that we're working on a worksheet as well that I didn't formally assign as homework. I'll give you a little bit more time to work on that worksheet after we've gone over this. Question number one says an applied force of 40, 450 newtons forward is needed to drag a 1,000 kilogram crate at a constant speed across a horizontal rough floor. If I'm pulling this crate across the floor with 450 newtons, but it's moving at a constant speed, what do we know about the net force here, the total force, if it's moving at a constant speed? If something's at rest, the net force will be zero. If it's not zero, what's going to happen to it? It's not going to stay at rest. If the net force is 20, it's going to start moving, right? If an object is moving, it's going to move at a constant speed, unless there's a net force. If the net force is zero, it's going to keep moving at a constant speed. So if, I'm a, if it's moving at a constant speed, but I'm pushing it forward with 450, then friction must be doing what? Four fifty in the positive direction. What's the net force when I move at a constant velocity? Zero. So what must friction be? Four fifty the other way. So when we're moving, when we apply a force that just causes something to begin moving, that's going to correspond to the maximum possible force of static friction. But when we're applying a force that keeps something moving at a constant speed, that's going to be the force of kinetic friction. We're going to say the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu times the normal force. We're going to solve for the coefficient of friction, or we're going to solve for mu. So it's FKF over Fn. The force of kinetic friction will be 450. That's really my applied force, but it's the same thing as my force of kinetic friction. And my normal force is 1,000 times 9.81, at least for now. Now let's go through this on the calculator here. We're going to say uh, 450 divided by bracket, use some brackets here, 1,000 times 9.81. Gives me 0 0.045. Oh, wait a second. Not 0 0.045. What should it be? 0 0.045. 5, 9? Why three digits here? This is, how many digits is that? Three. How many is this? Four. Three and four, final answer should have three, the least precise piece of data. Remember, that counts now, right? Significant figures counts now. I also told you, I think, that if it's a quiz or even a test for now, you can ask me about significant figures. I'll help you. But if you do them wrong, you're going to get marked wrong. So if you're unsure, make sure you ask me. Is that OK? I think I talked about this with you guys yesterday, um, why I didn't assign question number two. Yeah? Uh, you could, but you don't have to. Yeah, I, I, this is still three digits. The two zeros don't count. So, you know, we're looking for a three-digit answer. This is a three-digit answer. That's fine. Now, they put it in scientific notation, three digits still. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I can't remember whether you guys are the other class that I was talking to about this yesterday. Why am I not, why did I not assign question number two? What's wrong with that? Downhill, constant speed, force of friction. Yeah? 
Yeah, you're on an angle. And if you're on an angle, like here's gravity. Here's the normal force. In question one, here's gravity. And here's the normal force. This normal force cancels out or balances this force of gravity. This normal force, because it's not even in opposite in direction, doesn't balance or cancel gravity. So we don't know what the normal force is here when the angle is 15 degrees. We're going to learn to do that, but that's not yet. That comes later on. All right. Let's do uh, another example here, and then I'll let you work on your worksheet again for a little while. So it says, uh, a 10-kilogram object is at rest on a surface that is a coefficient of static friction, 0.95 in dynamic friction, or what's the other word for dynamic? Kinetic friction. Either one works. 0.65. Are those two uh, kinetic and uh, static friction coefficients realistic? Static is 0.95. Kinetic is 0.65. Realistic? Sure. We expect static to be bigger than kinetic, right? doesn't mean the static friction force is always bigger, but the coefficient is always bigger. What's the force of friction if you apply 50 newtons? Well, what is important to know? What is it important to know that we don't know yet for this question? Yeah? Sorry? Okay, you're right. But even before that, I was thinking, we don't know whether or not it moves. That's important, right? You want to determine the force of friction, you better know what type you have. So Braden suggested to find the maximum force of, uh, to find the maximum force of static friction to see if it moves. So let's do that. That doesn't form part of the answer, but we have to find it to get A and B. We're going to say FSF max is equal to mu times the normal force, which is equal to uh, 0 0.95 times 10 times 9.81. And we do the math for that. What do we get? 0 0.95 times 9.81 times 10, 93.2 two, or we'll say 93 newtons. That's not an answer, right? That's just the maximum force of static friction. Static friction could be less. That's just the most it can be, Cal. Um, can you put the weight in grams? Like no, no. It's funny. Somebody asked me that this morning as well. Um, do you have chemistry right now? Uh, no. no? Um, chemistry uses grams. Physics does not. Physics uses kilograms always for everything. So always kilograms. I think it's just a matter of scale, right? In chemistry, you're often using like two grams of a chemical. In physics, you're almost always talking about bigger things, at least in high school physics. Yeah, I might. Yeah, I might. If I give you something in grams, how would you convert that to kilograms? Not times it by 1,000. If you have 500 grams, like when I go to the store to buy ground beef to make, uh, to make pasta with, pasta sauce with, I might buy ground beef that is 800 grams. Okay, if I multiply that by 1,000, that would give me 800,000 kilograms. Okay, when I walk out of no frills, I'm not going to walk out with 800,000 kilograms of ground beef because that would go bad. I couldn't keep that in my freezer. So what would you do? You wouldn't multiply by 1,000. You would, yeah. Um, Brayden, it's funny though. Like, like so you made that mistake, you, you multiply instead of divide, right? I do that all the time. Not with that particular one, but with other ones that I don't use as much. I do that all the time. I, I go the wrong way. It's multiply or it's divide, and I get mixed up with that. So it's okay to, to guess multiply, but just see if it's reasonable, right? 800 times 1,000 is 800,000. That, that wouldn't be reasonable, so it would mean we'd have to divide. Okay? Okay, so the maximum force is 93 newtons. That doesn't mean the, for the actual force is 93. It's just how hard it can push. I push with 50. Does it move? Ireland, does it move? If I push with 50 and the maximum static was 93? No, no I'm 43 away. Like, I'm a long way away from getting this thing moving. And the best I can do is 50 newtons. It isn't going to move, ever. 
So what kind of friction is it? It doesn't move. Static. How much friction do we have if it doesn't move? Static. Stubborn. How hard does friction push? Adam? Yeah. Friction is just however hard I push, unless I push harder than the maximum force of static friction, and then it becomes kinetic. And finally, if we push the, uh, the object with a force of 300 newtons, does that beat static friction? I push with 300. Max static friction is 93. Does it move? Yep. Yeah. So what kind of friction do we have? Dynamic or kinetic, yeah. So what's the force of friction? 300 newtons? No. Let's find the force of kinetic friction. Now we get 0.65 times Was it? 63 newtons, thank you. So, something interesting about this. Didn't I tell you that static friction is always bigger than kinetic friction? Didn't I tell you that? Well, look at this. Here's static. It's 50. Kinetic is 63. Is that static bigger than that kinetic? Did I lie? Well, no, I didn't lie, but that's not exactly what I said either. Yeah. I, right, I said the max force. We're not going to ever say FSF is greater than FKF. It can be, but not necessarily. What we'll say is FSF max is greater than FKF. Friction, if I had to push this with 2 newtons, friction would have been 2 newtons. That's way less than kinetic friction, but the maximum possible value isn't. Let's have a look at number five on the worksheet here. It says a 100 kilogram object is at rest on a horizontal surface. Here's static friction. Here's kinetic friction or dynamic friction. Um, we apply a fire force of 400 newtons for five seconds. Uh, what's the force of friction going to be? Firstly, recognize that it doesn't matter how long I apply a force for. It's not going to change friction. Okay, if 50 newtons causes it to move, it doesn't matter whether I apply it for five seconds or 5,000 seconds. If it doesn't, then it doesn't matter whether I apply it for 5 seconds or 5,000 seconds. If you're pushing on that dresser to push it across your room, your bedroom, and you're not making it move, like, give up on it. Like, stop. Because pushing it for 5 minutes is not going to make it move. If it's not moving, it's not going to start moving. What do you got to do to get it moving? Push harder. Not push longer. Push harder. So we apply a, fire f a force of 400 newtons. We want to know what the force of friction is. The first thing we got to do here is see if the darn thing moves. See if it moves. And to know if it moves, we have to calculate FSF max, the maximum force of static friction. It's going to be mu times the normal force. So that's going to be what? Mu is 0 0.6 for static friction. The normal force is m times g, 100 times 9.81. That gives us a value, I think, of 588.6 newtons. This is not the answer to question A. This is just what is the maximum force of static friction. Now, my question for you is, if this is how hard static friction can act, and I push on it with 400, does it move? Remember, static friction does whatever I do until 588.6, and then it gives up. If I push on it with 400, does it give up yet? Janae? Just, no. No, like static friction still got another 188 newtons to give. So it's not going to give up yet. It doesn't give up till 588. So does it move? No, it doesn't. Braden, if it doesn't move, and I push with 400, then what's static friction going to be? 400. That's it. There's no calculation to do for question A per se, other than determining the max force of static friction so that I can see if it moves or not. If it doesn't move, hey, if you figure out that it doesn't move, question's easy. 
doesn't move, friction is just going to be however hard I'm pushing. Now let's look at question B. Remember, static friction gives up at 588. The stubborn force of static friction gives up at 588.6. I apply 650. Who wins? Who wins, me or static friction? I do. I push with six, 650. It gave up at 588. Does it move? Yeah, I won. Hey, I won. This tug of war between me and static friction where I, I push a little harder, it pushes harder, I push a little harder, it pushes harder, and this little tug of war where it can only push or pull with, six, with uh, 588 newtons, I won because I pushed with 650. So does it move? Yes. If it moves, then we've got to determine what the value of kinetic friction is. Mu k is, well, this time it's 0 0.45 times m, which is 100, times g, which is 9.81. 0 0.45 times 100 times 9.81 is 441. All right? That's it. I pushed with 650. It moved. Kinetic friction kicks in because static friction gave up. Kinetic friction is 441. What if I applied a force of 1,000 newtons? What would friction be? Push with 1,000. What's friction going to be? There's a quick, simple answer to that one. What is it? 441. 441. I push with 10,000. What's friction going to be? 441. Push with a million. Friction is going to be 441. Okay? It does, it's the tug of war. It does what I do until 588, right, David? And then once I beat it, it's kinetic friction. It just starts sliding. And its force of friction is going to be the same no matter what after that. Okay. How much force is required to get it moving? What is it? Yeah, it's 588. Or we'll say 589 newtons. 589 newtons is required to get it moving because we calculated that to be the maximum force of static friction. Okay. Is that, is it coming? A couple of things here, guys. Firstly, I was having kind of this conversation with some people over here earlier. Um, it's normal. It's normal for some of these questions to be hard. One person said, I would have never gotten that. That's okay. If you understand it now, understand my logic, that's good. Okay, we're getting there. I don't expect you to be there. I expect you to be getting there. Okay? The other thing is, and under, understand, I don't mean to be condescending to people or anything. There is, there is value in struggle. There is value in struggle. If everything is easy, you don't learn anything. You don't grow. Okay? If, um, my son plays uh, hockey and uh, in uh, bantam hockey. Um, they always want to win, right? The first game, first tiering game they played the other day, they won 7-1. You don't get better by playing teams that you beat 7-1. You don't get better by playing teams that don't cause you to struggle and don't cause you to challenge. Right? You get better by playing good players. You get smarter by doing tough things, by doing challenging things. There is value in the struggle. So don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. Just ex accept it, and we'll get smarter. Sorry? Yeah, keep, keep on swimming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, I should, that's what I should put at the front of my room is, uh, is just keep swimming. What is it, just keep swimming? Is that what she says? Just keep swimming. Yeah, yeah, I should actually. Yeah. Okay, guys. Hey, you packed up. You got homework here. People? You people? 
Oh, that's not the one. Though. Electric fields, that's not your homework. You don't know anything about electric fields. You know something about friction, though. Well, I, like, I pretty much did the worksheet except for questions six and seven, which is like. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah they're not even math, exactly. So, page 190, number one is six and ten, guys. Guys, I think you will find that these questions, for the, for the most part, won't challenge you as much as those worksheet questions. And hold on after the blessing for just one second, okay?